Welcome to FIRST Canada's FTC training series. Controlling your robot with the gamepad is called teleop and is important for every robot. Today we will go over the basics of this by controlling a DC motor and servo motor with buttons on your gamepad. First, we will make our robot drive forward while we hold down the A button on our controller. Then, we will switch two servo motors between two predetermined positions by pressing the X button. To create a file, we will click Create New Op Mode and type in Operator Drive for our name. Looking over the basic code that has been created for us, we see two comments. Put initialization blocks here and put run blocks here. Below the initialization comment is where we will put our code that is to be run before the robot moves, such as setting variables. Below the put run blocks here comment is where our loop code will go. The loop is where all the action is. Think of this as the beating heart of the robot. Each beat determines what needs to be done in that exact moment. And after it is done, it beats making it a loop, as the name suggests. The first thing we need to do is change the direction of one of our driving motors. This is because they are facing opposite directions on our robot, and otherwise, when we powered them on and set them to the same speed, they would spin in opposite directions. To do this, we go to Actuators, DC Motor, then select Set Motor Direction to Direction Reverse, then change the motor name to Right Motor. Next, we will add the code to the loop so that our motors run. First, we will need to create a new variable called Motor Button. This will store the gamepad value. We then set this variable to the gamepad 1 A button. We then need to create an if else statement by going to logic and selecting it. We then go to variables and select motor button and place that in the if statement. If the button is pressed, then it will execute the code in the do portion, and otherwise it will execute the code in the else portion. In the do section, we then go to the actuators, DC motor, dual, and set power to both left and right motor. We go to math and select an integer to set the power to and change its value to 0.1 as we do not want it to go too fast. In the else section, we do the same thing but set the power to 0. The last thing we will do today is toggle the two servos between the two positions when we press the X button. Thinking in terms of how this will work, when we press the X button, the motor should change to position 2, and then when we press it again, it should go back to position 1. We will start by creating two new variables, servo posts, which will keep track of the servo position, and old servo button, which will keep track of if the X button was pressed last time the loop was called. In the init, we just set the servo post to 0 and the old servo button to false. The old servo button variable will allow us to create the toggle effect. Instead of going to one position while holding down the button and then going back once we release, each time we press and release the button, the servos will change positions. Later, at the very end of our loop function, we will also set the old servo button to what the servo button is at the end of the loop. Like last time, we want to get the state of a button, in this case, x. We will create a new variable called servo button and set it to gamepad1, x. Now that it is defined, we can create the variable old servo button and then set it to the variable servo button at the end of the loop. To create the toggle effect, we create an if statement. We then go to logic and add the AND block to our if statement. This requires two conditions to be true. The first condition is that our servo button is pressed and therefore pressed in this instant. The second statement is not old servo button. The not operator switches the boolean to the opposite of what it is currently, so true becomes false and false becomes true. By checking if the button is pressed down at the current instant and not pressed down in the previous instant, it creates the toggle effect by making each press and release a combined event. If we did not have the second part of the statement, then if the button were accidentally held down, the servo would rapidly toggle back and forth. In this condition, we will have another if and else statement. We want to toggle our servo between 0 and 1 position, so in the first condition, we check to see if the position is zero. 
If this is true, then we will set the position of our front servo to zero and back to one. This is because they are facing opposite directions and the servo posts variable to one. In our else statement, we do the opposite by setting the servo post to zero and both front and back servos to 0 0.5. At the end, we update our servo position to the current servo post variable. Depending on how tight of a grip you want or how far out, you can adjust these variables. Today we covered the basic of operator drive by making our robot drive forward when we press the A button and the servo claw to toggle positions when we press the X button. The concepts here are used in every robot to create controls that are intuitive and functional for the drivers.